All right, guys, there's a few things to cover off in today's video. The first one is going to be, we're going to have a look at every single item that's sold in my eBay store from over the weekend. If we pull the numbers up, it was a total of 20 items, $790 in value. Take out the fees, post cost of goods. Guys, it was a $447 profit weekend, which I'm pretty happy about. We'll have a look at some of those. Hopefully, they can help your own reselling business out there. The next one as well is for the beginners. Anyone that's just been starting out over the last few months, maybe you haven't done it yet, you're thinking about getting into selling on eBay. Well, there's just one number that you need to focus on. If you're at that stage of the journey, I'm really looking forward to bringing you that information. The third one as well is we're giving away a pair of Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2s. Jeez, I can't wait to draw the winner of this one. That will be at the end of the video, so do stick around for that. Uh, massive episode, looking forward to diving into it. Let's have a look at some of the items that sold. We'll start with the DVDs. All right, guys, let's get into it. We had a total of nine sales come through in the media section this weekend. A lot of CDs coming through, which was a little bit interesting. $175 in revenue works out to about $19 per item. I'm going to kick things off over here with the DVDs. We've got the City of Angels with Nicolas Cage. This one actually sold for $19.50 due to the fact that it was brand new and sealed. Make sure you're looking out for your brand news when you're in the thrift. The gods must be crazy. This one sold to a viewer by the name of Michael. Thank you very much for your support, Michael. That one sold for $13. Uh, Michael also bought another item that I'll show you a little bit later in the video. Uh, Top Spin 4 on the PlayStation 3. Little video game sale there for about $18.50. And then we had Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3 uh, on the Game Boy Advance. That one actually sold for $35. So that was a good little win there. And then, yeah, guys, plenty of CDs. So nothing really to write home about around these. The Best of Bowie, Offspring, and The Phantom of the Opera. They sold for 10 bucks a piece. But we had a good one here with Motley Crue. That one sold for $19.50. So that was awesome. And then I've done a bundle here of Def Leppard CDs. So we've got a total of four that have come through. And I've got a $40 sale price. Now, the reason why I want to keep doing the bundles is that I only have to have one postage cost versus four different postage costs for this one here. So more money in my pocket, basically, if I'm going to be doing the bundles. And that's why I like to do it, not only for CDs, but for video games and for DVDs as they come in. So always bundle up your items, 175 bucks, nine sales, working out to $19 per item. All right, guys, we've had a really good run in the shoe section this weekend. We had a total of five sales, but it worked out to $332 in revenue. So that works out to $66 per sale. We'll kick things off with a pretty random one, to be honest with you. We've got a pair of Avidians here. These are actually a pair of Nike skateboarding shoes. They're a very old school shoe. I found them for $3 in the thrift, so I thought I'd take a stab on it. Ended up getting a $35 sale price with these, but they did take over a year to sell. So I don't know if we'd be buying those ones again. Um, netball shoes as well, netball season just kicking off. US seven and a half on these ones here, and it's probably the lowest I'd go when I'm buying my shoes. They just seem to sell better when they're a slightly larger size. We've got a $38.95 sale price in the end on those, but again, they did take a while to sell. Nike Tiempos, these never take too long to move. Um, we got a really good sale price of $65 on these. They're pretty much a mid-tier footy boot. You can get your entry levels, you can get your elites. These sort of sit right in the middle at the legend status. So uh, a lot of information around the shoes. It's just a learning process. But for me, I knew that I could get a relatively good dollar on these. 65 bucks, that was a pretty good return. Um, now these, I found these in a trip to the thrift on Thursday. You might have remembered I picked these up. These were the, uh, these were the Adidas Predator Freak Point Ones and uh, an awesome pair of shoes. I, I always sort of say the molded studs there where, where you can see the clear tip. That's when you know that it's at that elite level that I'm speaking about. So these are a top of the range shoe and they do sell for about 150 bucks. However, there was just a bit of wear on these and once I got them home and had a bit of a closer look at them, there was some, there was a little bit of fabric tear, not, nothing too crazy, but I ended up dropping the price pretty considerably and it did allow the shoes to sell pretty quick. So $85 we ended up getting for those. Maybe I could have pushed for a few more bucks, but I'm still happy to turn them around in what was just a couple of days. Uh, and then the last one that I've got for you, I bought these in a flea market and I paid up for them. I paid $40 for these Metcons. These are a pair of gym shoes. They're just a really flat base, so the weightlifters like to wear them and they sell like crazy. So not too long of a sale price, or, or I should say a turnaround for these. We've got $109 and uh, I paid the 40, so I'm still making myself a good 35 bucks after fees and post. So there you go guys, five sales, 332 bucks in revenue. Works out to 66 bucks a shoe. Now in the shorts and the pants section, I've just had these come through, which was a pair of Commonwealth Games, women's size 12, uh, just casual exercise shorts. So $25 we got on these. I would have liked to have done a few more pairs of pants and, and jeans because I've just got so many in all of these tubs here, but unfortunately just the one sale. So we've got a bit more work to do in this category. 
All right, guys, we had four tops and T-shirts come in to sell. The first one here was this sort of novelty Luis Suarez Liverpool, um, I guess Jack Daniels novelty T-shirt, this one here. Kind of a cool little print. Um, found it a while back, and Michael actually picked this one up with the DVD that I spoke of earlier. So 25 bucks he paid for this, plus 13, worked out to a $38 sale. So thank you very much for your support, Michael. Uh, this one here as well, we got an industry long sleeve button-up shirt sold for $27.50 but I would not recommend that you pick this one up again next time that you're in the thrift. It just takes forever to sell and you don't typically get a good sell, a sale price for it. So 2750 I thought was actually a pretty good result in the end. Um, the Carlton Footy Club had a good little pre-season win on the weekend, so maybe this is the reason why this one's got on to sell. Nice little vintage style, not vintage at all, but a bit of a vintage style print on it. Um, we got a $33, I think, sale price in the end on this one here. So I uh, didn't buy this one too long ago, a couple of bucks in the thrift, got a pretty good conversion on that one there. And then this one here, uh, one of the lone pieces of women's wear that I've ever really done. We found a Burberry women's jacket. This is a size six. Um, look, I have no idea what this thing is, whether it's good, bad, ugly, really nice, but uh, Burberry's a good brand. So I paid 20 bucks for it um, in a garage sale and I sold it on best offer for a hundred bucks. Now guys, as you know, I'm not really doing my book sales too much anymore. So any book sales that I get come through, I'm pretty excited about. We had this one come through here. It's a fourth edition human physiology or anatomy textbook. You often get the uni students looking to try and pick these things up. And that was certainly the case with this one here. And uh, I was really happy to get a $30 sale price on it. It's gonna cost a little bit to ship off. That's why I don't typically like to buy the books anymore. Postage is pretty expensive due to the weight. Um, so this one should ship for about, I don't know, 12 bucks, something like that. So it means it's just an $18 sale price, but I only paid a dollar for it in a garage sale. And like I said, I was almost gonna go and donate this one back to the op shops just because I'm not doing books anymore. So to make a couple of bucks on this one, to get it out the door, I'm, I'm still pretty stoked. All right, guys, there is uh, one number for all eBay resellers out there, but more importantly for the new guys out there that are just starting out, or maybe you're thinking about getting into reselling for the first time, that you need to be focusing on. And that number is your active listings number. But I wanna give you some background as to the reason why your active listings number is so, so important. I consider it a bit of a base layer um, to help the algorithm generate you further sales. And a perfect example of that is the fact that for me right now, I've got 1,500 items in my store and that allows me to generate seven and a half sales a day for the 10 listings that I put into eBay every day. So a pretty good conversion rate. You're talking about 75%. Now, that was the case when I very first started. If I had a base layer of a couple of hundred items in my store, that would only generate me three to four sales a day. So I think it's really important for you guys to get that base layer up to the point that you need it to be per the goals that you've got for your eBay business. Now, it's gonna be different for everybody. If you're just looking for a couple of hundred bucks, you might only need 500 items in store. If you're doing it part-time for a few hundred dollars a week, maybe a thousand items is where you need to be. But I think if you're trying to be full-time, I truly think at a $40 average sale price, of, of thrift store sort of items that you're trying to flip. I think about 1,500 items is where you really need to be. Um, maybe even a few more, but they need to be quality items as well. So trying to build this base layer, it's not so much about just putting anything into there. It, it's, it is a tricky one because you need the quality items. You need them at a low, low price to be able to profit on. And that you can't just readily go out and purchase that. It's a bit of a fine art to kind of learn it as you go. I certainly bought bad items when I first started. But the key here is to just try and focus on not so much how much money you're making, just focus on how many items you can get into your store that are quality at a good average sale price, and that will get you your consistent sales. So make sure you're focusing on that. It seems simple. Everyone thinks money, money I guess, and, and how much money they can make with it and sort of time for money and the ratios associated. But I actually think if you're first starting out, you should go, I wanna get 500 items in my store. How am I gonna do that as quickly as I possibly can? And hopefully it takes you a while because you start to sell a few items because you're putting in good items into your store. So hopefully that made some sense, guys. List away, that is the most important thing. And make sure when you are building it up, you're building it up by consistently listing every single day. So. We're here at the thrift store now. Let's jump into it. We'll see what we can grab, which are quality items that would be good for you guys to be listing up. We'll see you soon. 
Alright guys, we're kicking things off in the shoe section because that's just what I mainly sell and I uh, found these ones right here. The ACCC is a dead giveaway that this is a top of the range footy boot. Remember when I sold those footy boots earlier today I said mid range? Well, these are top of the range. So unfortunately there was just some sold damage there that I couldn't go ahead with the purchase but for 10 bucks that was an absolute steal if they were good. Diadora, I think that's how you pronounce it, Diadora, at $25 for a pair of uh, cycling shoes. Unfortunately just a little bit too steep for me on this occasion but these ASIC shoes were awesome for $10. Great condition. I like picking these ASIC gels up. Um, they should turn into about 50 bucks. A really good pair of shoes. A pair of Harachis as well. There was just no insole. And to be honest, guys, I just prefer not to have the headache of trying to sort out an insole. And therefore, I'd, I'll go against those ones there. But for 10 bucks, I ended up just grabbing these ASIC shoes. And they should do pretty well. Another one as well. A really good brand in the short section. Relax there. Tommy Bahama. That's a dead giveaway. Size 34 waist. These these are in excellent condition, seven bucks. I'm gonna turn them into about 30 bucks pretty fast, I'd say. The brand does well for me. Speaking of brands, this is an absolute new one. We've got Berghaus here. This is a UK brand, um, something I hadn't heard of before, but there's some fantastic comps on this one. This is a waterproof cap, just look like really good quality. So I did a bit of a comp search and sure enough, it goes for some good money. At Midsummer Murders, my goodness guys, $25. We have an absolute stack here. Now there was one to 17 I found on uh, eBay that went for $80. These are brand new sealed. I've got one to 27, plus I've also got 33 up to number 47 as well. So 66 is a complete set, but I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this for 50 bucks because it should turn into 200. Oh boy, oh boy, guys, Midsummer Murders, hey? I've got a, basically two thirds of that set, 40 out of 66 uh, discs. So let me know in the comments below, would you have done that for 50 bucks yourself? It's a lot of money to be spending on DVDs, albeit they were brand new though, which kind of helps. Uh, $71 total spend on four items. I'm pretty comfortable with every single purchase we've made in there. So let's get back home. Uh, we've got a pair of Yeezys to draw out to one lucky winner. 225 entries. So a one in 225 chance I think is pretty good if you got into that draw. So let's get back home and see who won. Let's go ahead and do the random number generation. Right, so it is number 24. So comment number 24 is gonna be the winner of this one. I'm gonna go into the latest video that I put out, my flea market video on Sunday, and just count them my way down uh, to see who the winner is. 22, 23, and 24. The winner of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2s is Gail Wallace. Congratulations, Gail. And I can confirm you have commented on all three videos from last week. So you are completely eligible to win. And uh, congratulations. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, shoot me a message on Instagram with your address details and I will get them out to you straight away. For everybody else that entered the competition, thank you so much for the love. Honestly, all the really nice comments that came along with the genius code word was really motivating for me to keep making videos and to be here at 7,000 subscribers. I'm pretty blown away by that. I'm looking forward to ticking over 10,000, hopefully in the not too distant future. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do that. It'd be awesome to get you on board. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video with a bit of information in there around trying to build up that store as a new seller. A great way to do that, as I mentioned, is to source really quality items and a good way to do that is to check out this video right here to get a few ideas of what to look for when you're in the thrift next so check out this video appreciate you being here 30 percent clubbers that stick through to the end you guys are the absolute best you know that thank you very much we'll see you on thursday for a trip to the thrift